Fantasy football is back! Say hello to sleepless nights and goodbye to your sanity. A new season of Keepers starts right now. Welcome to week one of Keepers. I'm your host, Matt Ufford. Ah! Just wanted to see if you were paying attention. I'm Susanna Collins, and Matt has graciously passed the baton of this show into my eager and hopefully capable hands. Now, I'm no fantasy champion like my predecessor, but I will do my best to steer you in the right direction this season. Basically, I'm trying to lower expectations so that if I get it completely wrong, I can deflect responsibility, and if I nail it, I look like a damn fantasy genius. It's a win-win for me. Let's kick things off with week one sits and starts. Maybe you're feeling pretty good about your draft, maybe not. Either way, this is the time to start your big names. Now we say it every year, but week one is way too early in the season to get real fancy with your matchups. Just play your top dogs and Godspeed. Probably not one of your top dogs, but you should start him anyway, Ryan Tannehill. He should get off to a hot start with his new set of weapons against the complete joke of a football team residing in our nation's capital. Coming off one of the worst seasons of pass defense in the history of organized football, Washington should be a little bit better. It'd be impossible not to be, but they're still awful. And they'll be without Bashad Breeland. Sit Melvin Gordon. Absolutely a rookie to watch, but if Haloti not as hamstring cooperates, Detroit has all the pieces in place to make life miserable once again for opposing backs. Does losing Indomitian Sue to Miami hurt? Absolutely, but few players can mitigate that as much as Nada, and it's doubtful they'll yield a big outing to a back in his first career game. Start Eddie Royal. Talented as he is, Alshon Jeffrey just cannot seem to shake his calf injury. The Bears are hopeful he'll be available against Green Bay, but if he's out or limited in any capacity, Jay Cutler is going to be looking for Royal a ton over the likes of Josh Bellamy and Marquise Wilson. They'll also be trying to keep pace with Aaron Rodgers and company, so expect new OC Adam Gase to have his offense airing it out early and often. That's assuming Cutler can actually stay on his feet behind an O-line that's about as reliable as the NFL's arbitration process. Sit! Cam Newton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, he's Superman, but it's going to take a few weeks for Newton to click with his decimated receiving core. That'll be starting guys like Billy Brown and Ted Ginn. Yeah. So a road game against a surprisingly competent Jaguars pasty that's been bolstered by the addition of promising cornerback Devon House means Cam should probably grab some bench this week. Start Reuben Randall. Victor Cruz's status is up in the air and expect Odell Beckham to be double and triple team with the magical three-fingered catch still haunting Dallas's dreams. Also factor in that the Cowboys really only have one serviceable corner and that's Orlando Skandrick and uh, yeah, he's out for the season with a torn ACL. Reuben could have a productive day for Big Blue. Sit, Amari Cooper. All right, hear me out on this one. Cooper has all the makings of a future stud in this league, but we've got to cool our jets on him for just a minute. His welcome to the NFL game against the Bengals could be a rough one. Over the last couple years, Marvin Lewis has had his secondary bottling up number one receivers better than anybody else. Could be a long day for the Rook. Start, Allen Robinson. Yeah, I know, more props for Jacksonville. I'm as shocked as you are, but the Jags have been high on this guy all summer. He's been compared to a young Brandon Marshall, and he's going to be Blake Bortles' go-to target, especially in the red zone, where he's going to get a lot of the looks that otherwise would have gone to Julius Thomas. Sit, Dwayne Allen in Buffalo. The additions of Andre Johnson and Philip Dorsett likely mean fewer targets for Indy's tight ends. But beyond that, Buffalo suffocated tight ends last year, and in fact only surrendered two touchdowns to him all season. Season. That trend should continue as their tight end neutralizers, like youngster Preston Brown, are only getting better. All right, guys, now obviously this NFL season is in its infancy stages, and I don't recommend tinkering with things too much. In fact, we're going to skip the trading block segment for week one, but in case you got an itchy trigger finger, here are a few moves that could pay off. Hire Marvin Jones and fire Terrence Williams. Now, it's easy to forget that Marvin Jones was emerging as a double-digit TD guy the last time we saw him on the football field. It's not as easy to forget Terrence Williams going completely MIA down the stretch in 2014. And so Cole Beasley and Devin Street are going to be nipping at his heels for more playing time from day one. Hire Josh Hill and fire Jordan Reed. Hill's got plenty of fantasy potential a season after hauling in five touchdowns despite playing only a quarter of their offensive snaps. After they shipped Jimmy Graham out of the Big Easy, he's in line for a huge uptick in playing time. As for Reed, well, if you breathe on the guy, he's likely going to pull a hammy. And uh, hey, newsflash, his QB situation ain't too pretty. He did play his best ball last year with Colt McCoy throwing to him, and my Jay Gruden QB carousel schedule says that it's set to switch from Captain Kirk to McCoy right around week four or so, so maybe pick him back up then. 
Woohoo! And that, my friends, is a wrap for week one of Keepers. Just remember, at this very moment, we're all in first place. Hold on to that feeling, guys. It's gonna be a wild ride. Set your lineups. We'll see you next week.